Hello everyone, Laura K. Buzz here. Um, you're about to watch an interview between myself and a photosensitive epilepsy consultant, Yebe Newman. Um, I'm really proud of the interview that we did. Uh, we recorded it about a week ago, but there have been a couple of updates to the story since we had our conversation. Uh, so I wanted to do this little intro to give a bit of context to the discussion you're about to hear. Um, Around a week ago, when we recorded this discussion, Tekken 8 had a demo available which contained a mode that had um, alternating vertical or horizontal black and white stripe lines to uh, fill in characters. It was designed to be for, uh, for colorblind players, but it was having adverse effects for photosensitive players. And at the time of our discussion, it did not seem like the creators of Tekken really understood the problem with that. Um, they were reached out to by various press outlets, and the response that was given was not every colorblind mode is going to be useful for every colorblind player, and it very much sounded like they didn't understand the problem is this might be actively dangerous for photosensitive gamers. So we had this, this sort of conversation under the understanding of, at the very least, this setting is probably going to be in the disc version of the game, even if it gets patched later. Let's talk about it as it currently exists. The thing is, we've had a couple of updates since then. Uh, there was an interview that took place at a gaming tournament, I believe, uh, last week, where it was announced that they were working on a patch, and it did seem a bit more like they understood what the problem was. They were going to patch both the demo and the full game. We didn't know if that was going to be pre-release or post-release, and as of today, the day of recording this, um, which is two days before the game launches, I have confirmation that the disc version of the game that is releasing does have this black and white stripe mode that is a risk for photosensitive players, but there is an update available to download, you know, which will be available on launch day for people, it's, it's, it's out there now, which does remove this setting and replace it with something else. So, the mode that me and Yebe are going to be discussing does exist if you buy the disc version of the game and don't update it, it doesn't exist if you update it or if you download it digitally. I still think it's a really important discussion to have because the fact that this setting made it into the game, you know, at at all. Um, sorry, I had a swim this morning and your my hair is not particularly on camera ready. Um, yeah, the fact that this mode made it into the demo, made it into the disc version of the game is really, really, it's later than this kind of thing should be caught. And I think it's worth us having the conversation about it. You know, because it was a good jumping in point to talk about, like, how easily something can be helpful for one group of disabled players, but actively harmful to others. I wanted to give that context. Um, I do have a little uh, follow-up interview with Yebe that we've done to talk about the, the re new replacement mode and to just, like, add a little additional context now that it's been updated. So at some point in the interview, you might see us hop to being in other outfits, uh, you know, because we're recording a week later on a different day to just have a little tiny little follow-up chat, um, but I think the original discussion is still really interesting, and I think that uh, such a prominent issue in, you know, a demo for a game that is on the disc version of the game when it releases is still worthy of discussion, and, you know, it was a good jumping-off point for the conversation we had, so uh, at some point you might see future us and then back to us in the past handing off, but uh, I still think this is a really good chat, and I hope you enjoy. Hello everyone, Laura K. Buzz here. Uh, you may recognise that I'm here with someone else today. Uh, I'm joined by Yebe Newman. Uh, introduce yourself. Who are you, and why? Why are we? Why am I talking to you today? <laughs> Hi, uh, I am a very lovely person who has uh, photosensitive epilepsy, and I'm trying to help as many game devs and uh, digital media producers uh, make the products safer for people like me. Wonderful. Because it's sometimes very, fairly rare that you actually find someone who is uh, constructive and positive about helping. Uh, we have a lot of people who get very angry and uh, determine I... that game developers should just know. I. It's one of those things. I can understand why people get angry because I. I it, it's mm -hmm. photosensitivity is one of the few situations where video game accessibility can be a matter of safety. Um, and I. I understand when safety is on the line. That kind of that kind of response, but I also know that a lot of video game developers, their only knowledge is uh, flashing lights, bad. Maybe I don't know specifics. I'll, I'll I don't know exactly what I shouldn't be doing. Uh, so it's it's great that there are people doing work, you know, teaching people. Here here is exactly what the problems potentially are. 
Oh yeah, and the problem is I can't really give you a definitive answer on what's the problem and what isn't because I get surprised. Yeah. I've had this for 35 years and I still get surprised by stuff that I really didn't expect to be a problem. It, it's it's and... always it's always something I experience talking to people who have photosensitive conditions is the triggers are so wildly varied person to person even. Mm -hmm. But it, the, the problem is that I can tell every developer that, yeah, every time I get a seizure I get permanent brain damage. Super, now they're scared. But I can't tell you what's the problem. Okay, I can tell you what's dangerous when I see it, but I can't tell you what's safe up ahead, because it might not be safe for someone else. Indeed. Um, so specifically the reason we're chatting today is um, over the past couple of weeks, there has been some concern about a uh, video game that had a demo release at the uh, beginning of January, Tekken 8, which introduced a new mode that was designed with colorblind users in mind um that turns characters in the game into black and white striped uh, outlines that alternate in direction depending on which character they are and i've seen some people who are colorblind who have gone this is really good i find this much easier to differentiate what's what in this scene but there have been photosensitive users that have raised alarm bells going this is black and white lines very close together moving around the screen and uh, clips of this being shown are causing me problems and uh, the developers of Tekken don't seem to necessarily be taking seriously that this might be a threat. Um, their response to the situation seems to have been, not every colorblind setting's useful for every colorblind player, um, not really taking on board the criticism which is, you've not labelled that this could be a risk for people who are photosensitive sensitive and people are concerned about it. Um, now, you have agreed to watch this clip today, uh, or a clip of this today, um, and just to be clear to anyone seeing this, um, you are entirely aware of the the risks involved in that and are, are happy to do so. Yeah, I mean, that's I've been doing that for three years, just putting myself in front, in the firing line at the business end, and uh, seeing this one hurts, this one doesn't, and then paying the price for it, so it's, others don't have to. I, a genuine question out of curiosity. I, I, I'd I, always assumed that that had to be something that was done in, in game development, because I, I can't imagine there's any other way to tell if something is being designed in a safe way. But obviously, how do you ethically test if something is safe without putting people in harm's way to test if it's safe? <laughs> well, that's a big problem, because you can't. You can't pay someone to... Uh... That, that's the good old fun fine thing with uh, scientific studies. You can't pay people to put themselves in danger. Well, you can, but it's not ethically sound. Mm. Uh, so I volunteer to do this, and uh, I am also paying the price. I went from having one seizure every or every other year to having six per week, which is uh, kind of killing myself. But I am medicated now, and I haven't had a seizure for six months, so this should be fine otherwise I... i'm going to be interesting noises look away and pause the video very quickly well uh if 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 anything uh occurs uh don't worry about it people seeing the video will have worked around it i'm sure um yeah but uh, i don't actually want that to be edited out because uh, yeah. you, you need to see what actually happens to people because the may or may not cause an epileptic seizure warning you get at the start of game that's very nice but if you just assume that someone's rolling around on the floor and then they're going to be fine later, it's yeah, really true. I I, I know true. I know I uh, for the longest time didn't really have a solid sense of what ep epilepsy meant. I I I know you know you get the sort of cartoon depiction that's like the the, the vision painted, but it is it is important that people understand what you know uh, photosensitivity and epilepsy actually mean in in practice. I suppose. Oh yeah, I mean, it can vary. Some people, they basically just space out. They sit there like a zombie and drool. Some people have a 10% chance of their you know, the lizard brain just shutting off and killing them instantly. That's nice. Uh, I had one time where I forgot how to breathe. Not ideal. No, I suddenly got reminders that I definitely need to breathe, but the next 10 seconds, I didn't know how. Goodness. Which, um, that was fun. Um, not not a thing you ever want video games to put you through. Video no, games I mean, should ideally you, you not do up, that to you. You start up a game and going, ah, this is going to be great. This is... Yeah. Am I? Okay, good. Uh, it's not great, but all the developers I've talked to, none of them wanted to give people this issue, but uh, 
that they don't know what's causing it. And uh, the only way to figure that out is put someone to say, I'm going to go into this minefield and start clearing mines for everyone else. Uh, it, and, is, uh... it is, it is, it is appreciated work in a world that I, it really, it, it, in a perfect world, there would be no need for, but it, it unfortunately is where it is still. Um, so, shall we jump in and have a look at this clip? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to count down for yep. three and then press start and uh, now. Three, two, one, now. Oh, I hate the glowing purple uh, menu, Jesus. Okay, the vertical and horizontal lines are a choice. They are. Yeah, but... Annoying to look at when they're standing still. They, they definitely differentiate the characters. Oh, yeah. You also got those little flashes. Oh, Jesus, don't move around there. Oh, the eyeball defying mode. Okay, that's. It's actually better that they're moving around. The, the lines are standing still, but the characters are moving around and that just paints new lines. That's better than if the lines were moving around because oh, shit, that, was, that would be. That would be... Yes, it seems to be a static set of lines that are being revealed by the character rather oh, than... Oh, Jesus! Okay. When they actually start fighting, that's... Not great. No, it's not ideal. <laughs> I mean, you, you can see the way I'm basically automatically just going, Nope, nope, yeah. nope, 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 nope. That is... Yeah, that's... Nothing good to say about this, because... Okay, well, the camera moves around. The uh, I'm just gonna pause this. Yeah, Whew. we can we can stop there if that if that works. No, no, I'm just pausing. I don't know, one eighteen here. So yeah, the the camera moves around, but the line stands still. That is bad. The mm. characters are moving around with the painting new lines. That's that's more doable. The camera also zooms in rapidly when you have uh, whatever kill animation and stuff, and that is just not great. And then lightning and effects and such. I'm medicated, and this is unbearable to watch. Yeah, not medicated. I would be having a seizure that would last about two or three hours. So it... That's a minute's <laughs> worth of watching. It yeah. would be entirely unplayable. And the problem is that if people are streaming this, you get into the territory of people going on YouTube and getting a seizure from watching. Yeah. Someone who's played this six months ago or something. That is very not great. Yeah. Okay, and... let's unpause it and see what else goes great here. Okay. Now, the, the black and white actually makes it better for me, even though the, the hunts or something and the vertical striving are not great. But I can already guess how many colors there are with all the there are with all the effects, mm. and that would also be less great. You can also see how the way the um, when they hit, you actually get the shockwave effect in game. Mm. I had to stop uh, playing uh, Baldur's Gate three very early on because the uh, small firebolt, the small firebolt, um, also did the shockwave, and my brain just couldn't handle it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A, a plus for the uh, for the medication that would have um, that would have cost me a day. Otherwise. Yeah. And I, I mean, you, you can see the the facial reactions. <laughs> yeah. And the 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 problem with this is there are people who are colorblind, who have found this genuinely helpful in the demo. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that can simultaneously be true, while also mm -hmm. recognizing excitable colorblind gamers sharing footage of this going, this is really helpful for me, here is a clip, and putting it on social media, mm -hmm. has undoubtedly put some photosensitive people in a dangerous situation with, you know, the nature of auto-playing video, putting this in front of people unexpectedly. Oh yeah, you can have the GIF, you can have the videos, you can have some people using it as a meme or something. And it's not only people with epilepsy, we, we get a seizure, that's, that's yeah. fun. But you also have people who are just light sensitive, people who are going to get a migraine from it, but it is yeah. going to be 
it, in terms of man hours, it's going to call, be possible to cost thousands because yeah. if you're sitting at work, you have some downtime, you could just take your lunch break, you look at the video and you just get this in the face and you're down yeah. for the count that day. I I captured yeah. this footage and I don't have epilepsy. I don't have like any specific photosensitive condition, but I'm autistic and I found myself exhausted playing just like yeah. a round of this this way. The visual input was really exhausting. It was a lot to take in all at once, and it's one of those things where I don't see a world in which the release version of Tekken 8 doesn't have this mode in there. It seems clear that the developers have not taken on board that this is a potential risk and uh, are not likely to change course on it. But at the it's very... Also, uh, if they're very close to release, they're probably also unable to change it at this point. Yeah. Because, uh, this takes planning time, this takes development time, this also means that uh, we are cutting a feature that we've been yeah. advertising. But I imagine even if this, they even yeah. if they put up a warning at the start uh, with the pressing the button that that's that's great when you're playing the game, yeah. But if you're spectating the game, watching a video, watching a Twitch stream, and you jump in halfway through, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I feel like you're probably correct that there's not much that can be done to remove this uh, before release because I, I I know enough about development to know that the the disc version of this probably already exists somewhere like the mm -hmm. version that will be on the disc is out there and has this setting and I feel like at the very least there needs to be some degree of heads up of like hey if you're going to turn this setting on be aware it might cause issues for others like something that says hey don't use this on like if you're a streamer don't use this um without considering the risks that it might have something that gets people to stop and go am i using this setting in a context where i'm not going to cause anyone problems um yeah and, but, and that is basically am i using it online yeah um <laughs> I, am, am i streaming footage of this or is there anyone who lives in my home with me who might be photosensitive that i should think twice before using this mode because it's also a great way to figure out someone uh, that someone is photosensitive, <laughs> even if you didn't know previously, because they will definitely suddenly react to it. Yeah. Um. I mean, my eyes are still giving me a little bit of a blur issue here and there. So. Yeah. yeah. As as effects. as someone who you know you you uh, do a lot of of work on on advising developers on this kind of thing. Is there anything you think could be done at this stage to make? sure that to to make tekken 8 any less potentially dangerous in this regard there um the in the entire graphics setup and the entire graphics concept of this game is, is basically going to need a warning that says not just may or may not it's mm. going to say if you are photosensitive it's uh, not for you yeah and that's fine uh i mean there is no reason that all games should be perfectly safe for everyone and perfectly playable for everyone because that's just not going to happen with budget, play man hours and whatever. But it would be great to have a warning that says not just may or may not be a problem, but simply this one's no, not happening. Yeah. Don't. I, I, you might know this better than me. I've never seen a game explicitly have a warning that says, do not play this if you have photosensitive I issues. I've only ever seen the, uh, this may or may not be a problem, consult your doctor, unspecific, we're not going to tell you what is coming up that might be a problem. Are there any examples of games that have been that explicit, or do they generally, as, as my experience has been, just wishy-washy warning without specifics? <laughs> Closest I think I can get is well, a couple of indie developers. I've uh, you know suggested that they simply say, just no, don't, because if you have rhythm games where you have this orb that changes colors and uh, shapes and something, that's just not happening. Uh, and then then you can say, we know this isn't gonna be possible for you. I think the other closest one, I don't really remember specifically what it said, but I'm pretty sure uh, Hard Space Shipbreaker said something a lot more directly saying that this. This could be unplayable for someone with epilepsy. But mm. usually the the legal standard is that may or may not cause epileptic seizures in some people. It's basically they may or may not cause cancer in the state of California, which yes. is super legal bare minimum and fair if they don't know what might be a problem. But it also means that when I bought the game, not when I look at it on the Steam trailer, but when I bought the game, it says may or may not kill you within the next 80 hours. Which part? We don't know. But notice that it's not on the Steam trailer. So you could look at the advertisement, mm. get a seizure from it. Thanks, Wasteland. Um, 
and then have to buy it and then get the warning. That's that's yes. Yeah. And one one thing I realized a couple of days ago while I was I was doing some pre prep before chatting with you was um we're at a point now where both um, Xbox and PlayStation on their console stores do have accessibility uh, tags that appear as like you know th this game has these settings or doesn't have these settings in advance, and that's great. I don't believe either of those stores has a accessibility tag to warn you know, pro for or against uh, epilepsy sa safety. I, you know, that feels like a system that could be used to be like, this game is not safe if you are epileptic, could be, you know, highlighted at point of sale in a system like that. And I don't think either of them has attempted to communicate that yet, you know, presumably because they're in that situation of, well, we don't know exactly what's a problem, so we don't want to label it unsafe if it, if it turns out it's fine. Yeah, so usually marketing uh, doesn't really like the idea of saying this 1.5 million people should not play it. But do not buy this game. It's our game. You don't get to buy it. It's a really weird statement as marketing to put out. Um, I mean, that's sort of exclusive, I guess. That might raise the price. But in general, they don't really like to say we are making things unsafe for specifically you. So I can see the argument that I, you can yeah. you, you cannot guarantee this is safe for everyone. I, yeah, yeah. I, I understand it while also going, it would be really nice if you didn't have to be in that position of purchase before you see that warning that says, hey, something in here might it might try and kill yeah. you. Don't worry about it. Something in here. Yeah, I think the, the, the standard I'd like to see improved is that when you get, for example, the Steam trailer, it would be nice to have the warning in a video, in the start of the video in the Steam trailer, because Wasteland 3 knocked me the hell out. Yeah. The Steam trailer. It's... It's not a direct comparison, but it's making me think of um, one of the times I was most annoyed by a game trailer was a trailer for Grounded, which is a sort of open world game where you're shrunk down to tiny sizes. And it was a trailer that was talking about um, its arachnophobia mode. And it made a joke of showing big scary spiders in the arachnophobia mode trailer. And it's one of those yes. things where it's like God. trailer, like often trailers are not taken seriously in how they could be you know, leaning into or benefiting like, hey, we have these accessibility issues or fixes in a game, Re reflect those in your trailers. You know, yeah, you we have this yeah. it's, it's before, after, see how much better it is now. That's super, it, but you're still, you know, chasing yeah. people away from the screen out of panic. It, exactly. But I, I, I think like, yeah, yeah. if you're going to have a game like that, that isn't going to be particularly safe for people who have photosensitive conditions, you know, if you're gonna have that stuff be in a trailer, be like, have the warning in the trailer, so you don't watch the trailer that might have whatever flashing that's gonna be concerning, or have the warning and go, we'll have the stuff that's in the game, we've warned you in advance, now you can see up front whether the stuff in this is gonna be, you know, a problem for you, I guess. Yeah, but you can also say that the uh, once we get to that point that they know this might be a problem, maybe don't show that as part of the yeah. trailer. Because a lot of people are in kind of a denial state about uh, whether or not they have epilepsy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I played Brussels, super fun game, and uh, I got to a part where the, uh, they had this drug trip escort thing, and oh god. That was a fish island thing, there were magenta and cyan com colors combinating, and it was painful. But I loved the game, so I just decided, I don't have epilepsy today, I'm just going to plow through this. And it took me 15 minutes, and I had to sit like this and <laughs> peek through the little two fingers here, and it was torture. And once I finally got through it, I just never, ever wanted to play it again. I... Now, if you take that, that sequence, if you actually have a suspicion that this might be a problem for someone photosensitive, okay, super. One, don't make it mandatory to complete the game. Two, mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely. Don't put it in your trailer. Because yeah. um, I, people just browse. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's super interesting to hear that there are people who are sort of in denial about photosensitivity, but I, the, having heard you say that, it doesn't necessarily surprise me, because I imagine, and correct me if I'm on the wrong track with this, I imagine it must be scary to think I might not be able to enjoy a lot of media going forward if I acknowledge that this is a condition I have, it, I imagine that 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 might explain some of the reluctance to acknowledge it. And you, you, you can compare it to basically any sort of uh, illness. You can say people yeah. that, that go with, no, 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 I'm continuing to smoke because I'm not getting cancer. Yeah. Uh, I can definitely, definitely start working. Yes, I, you know, broke my arm, but it, it's healed up now. I can, I can do this, you know, two weeks too early or... 
things like that where you basically just get too frustrated because this is really really interesting this is just the niche for you and you're physically unable to and you just go no not today i can be physically unable tomorrow but right now i'm having fun and then yeah I, yeah it's the i don't want to admit that i have my limits i'm going to push through them and whether you know if the consequences come later that's later me's problem yeah i, can... I mean lactose intolerance i'm gonna eat this cheese because i'm not allergic today yeah, I, I, really love cheese, huh? I can empathize with that. Yeah. I know I've been to concerts before going like, I know I am going to I'm going to pay the, the, the price for all of that mm -hmm. social interaction and physical contact and loud noise tomorrow. But that's tomorrow's problem today. I'm going to have fun. Um, yeah. yeah, that is super interesting to, to, to consider. Hello, it's us from the future. Uh, this this part of the, the conversation is taking place a week after where we left off because uh, as of this morning, uh, surprisingly enough, Tekken 8 has been updated um, to remove some of the uh, stuff that we talked about previously in the conversation. Um, now, to, to be clear about this, the black and white strobe, uh, black and white line effect that we talked about previously is still in the game if you pick it up on, on disc and do not update it, that is still in there. But if you buy the game digitally or download the demo now digitally or update your physical version of the game, it has been updated. Um, have you had a chance to look at the, uh, the new um, replacement that is there for this black and white uh, uh, striped mode that was in there before? I saw a snapshot of it on your blue sky account and the first words out of my mouth were oh sweet zombie jesus is is this any better a, a for effort but oh dear <laughs> yeah so we'll yeah so i i've sent a video of over it's uh oh, yeah. for anyone who's not had a chance to see it yet it is replacing it with filled in white dots on one character and sort of hollow circles on on another oh, wow. i think is the way to talk about it uh, definitely not as stark of a contrast between light and dark, but it, it's different at the very least. It's, it's it's different. I'll give them that. Let's see what happens. I'll just base, bleh, press play here and oh, I love the adjustment. Oh, yeah. the adjustment is wonderful because having it on the maximum adjustment setting is uh, which all oh, that white background is in sense. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah, that is still in there, the very stark background option. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that was annoying, actually. The um, When it chooses uh, left or right player, you get this little flash, shockwave mm. flash. Yeah. That's generally a good idea to avoid those, or at least yeah. cut down on the intensity. But, you know, just figure that. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things in this game that could do with a turn off flash or reduce flashing effects. Oh, absolutely. But I think if we don't point it out, they'll never know. Yeah. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Jin Kazama definitely chosen. Yeesh. It's just a game consisting of flashing lights, isn't it? It, it really does Ooh. emphasize a lot with flashes. It is definitely better than the um, uh, horizontal and vertical stripes. I will give them that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A for effort and uh, let's call it a B for uh, uh, performance. Uh, I. I can definitely, I can actually follow the entire uh, fight here. Yeah. It's a little bit difficult to actually see what's going on when the camera gets placed mm. correctly or uh, incorrectly. But, um, well, you saw the, the previous one where it was basically covering yeah. my hand, that I had, covering my yeah. eyes. Yeah, I can actually see it. I can follow it. Um, and that, I think this is actually, quote unquote, good enough. Um, like James Burke would call it, don't go aim for perfect, aim for good yeah. enough. This is definitely good enough, um, because it will be fairly obvious for someone who's epileptic, or photosensitive anyways, that this isn't optimal for them. Mm. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of things in that game anyways, who, yeah. which wouldn't be optimal for them. And this, I will definitely say, is a massive improvement. I am really liking the... Um, Jin has those... Well, he has this. Okay, we don't like it when it's zoomed in. Ow. Yeah. If it covers the whole screen, that's bad. But during the fight, Jin has this uh, the grit, the, uh, the, the square grit. Yeah. Uh, that's very good. Mm. That's it's. Uh, it doesn't really uh, distract from the actual character or his moves. 
uh, it doesn't really come up and really get in your face, except when the camera zooms in and shows him because well, he won the battle. Oh, let me just see the name of the other dude. What's he called? Uh, Kazuya's one is. It's a problem. It's not a big problem as the the stripes, but it's a problem mm. because you have two separate uh, shapes that alternate. Yeah. And that means that when that then moves around, it's too much for the eyeball to focus on. Yeah. Uh, I think if they just kept it squares or mm. kept it circles, it would be a, a lot better. But definitely the, the squares and the, the thing that Jin has um, it works very well because you have a very subdued background and then you have the, uh, the white dot uh, foreground. And that is, it gives you all the detail. You can still see the character. It doesn't seem mm. like it obscures it. And it definitely tells you exactly what it is. I, I'm loving that one. Mm. So yes, I mean, I can see him a lot better. I can stand seeing him. Uh, it's still, uh, what do you want to call it? Straining. Straining the eye. Yeah. To see. But yeah, massive improvement. Holy shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. There's a few things that I've been thinking about since I saw this earlier today. And the first one that jumps to mind is if someone is streaming with this mode on, mm -hmm. at the very least, the, because this is fairly faded um, shapes, mm -hmm. I would imagine that um, just just because of, of bitrate compression over streaming services, this is going to be a lot more muted than big solid white and black lines that you know something like Twitch is gonna is gonna make very clear. Um, <laughs> I think by being faded as well, like, you know, autoplay videos of this on social media on a phone size screen aren't going to be nearly as obvious as uh, that initial interpretation was. Yeah, you, you have a lot of artifacting and it will be blurred out a little bit more. Yeah. But I'll definitely also say that uh, Jin's character there, um, you, can, you still have the color in the background. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Jin, it didn't really feel like either the color or the grid was occluding the other one mm. because whatever that name was uh, the with the ai controlled one you had the, you had the problem you had a very colorful uh character you know a very mm. solid blue purple and that really dominates but you also have an alternating grid which also dominates so mm. that takes up a lot of your attention span and a lot of uh, you know mental energy and uh, concentration just because these two things keep fighting for control. Jin's felt very much like it flew together very well. So if we change those characters out, I might have different opinions on uh, on the grid escapes, but yeah. definitely with the color combination, Jin, uh, Jin's worked very well. The, the, the uh, impression I get is that this is infinitely better than it was, and it oh, is it's... a really good step forward that at least this is done b by launch day. Even if mm -hmm. there is still work to be done, it's good that this version is there before the mass market gets their hands on this, I think. Absolutely. Both because, I mean, A for effort, guys. Wow. Especially with the time constraint that was from the feedback to the output. Yeah. That's very impressive. C considering... The fact that they've actually really thought this one through because the player gets to choose how much that grid actually takes up your focus. You can just have it slightly in the background, or you can go full force. And even when you went full force, I could look at it. Yeah. It's a little annoying, but I could look at it. I, Describing it, it hurt. <laughs> yeah. I'm genuinely surprised that this this happened in time for release, because given that a week yeah. ago when we, we spoke, it was almost exactly a week ago, they did not seem to know what the problem was. And mm -hmm. to within a week come around to understanding what the actual problem is and... Uh, implementing something that that at the very least lessens harm is really positive to see and yeah like because, um, yeah you you get you get preview feedback but yeah you also have uh, some devs who need to filter that feedback you can you can drown in feedback that's a yeah. problem and you have when you have comments on the internet you don't yeah. always get the information you need whether or not mm. people are actually genuinely giving you information that they think is going to be helpful or useful that's a detail but being able to actually filter out the information that people are giving you and whether they understand what they're actually mm. giving you that's it's a, it's a very yeah. impressive skill they've managed to get through here really yeah. impressive job and to me the thing that's most impressive uh, in some ways is that it's not just the main game that got patched they patched the demo this quickly as mm -hmm. well and 
I my assumption had been when I heard there was a patch coming, I thought they would just take the demo down. That would be my mm. thought is focus on patching the main game. This is an excuse to 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 not offer the demo because the demo has the problem in it, but to have made a simultaneous patch for both, that is really good to see. Again, I yeah. I have I, I, I'm pleasantly surprised by how quickly they have turned this around and yeah. mitigated. And obviously it's not perfect if someone picks up a disc version of the game and, and doesn't immediately patch it, the original issue exists. But I think this drastically reduces the chance of someone stumbling upon footage. Um, Absolutely, especially if you are streaming things online with the physical disc and you haven't uploaded it, I'm going to start wondering just exactly what your plan was. Well, that's that's it. If you're streaming, you probably have an internet connection and you probably will have patched you it. Probably but should update it's, your game, it's, it's, especially if it's yeah. an improvement, right? It's unlikely we're going to get people streaming who haven't installed the patch, and that that largely fixes a lot of the problem of mm. how this previously was. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I definitely say that the most interesting thing for me here is that they've given me the feeling that their accessibility team is part of um is under the marketing umbrella instead of the tech support umbrella the tech support is always tech support is always the cost center that's always something where they want to you know Ooh, that sounds expensive for no gain mm. and if you put accessibility in under there it gets we definitely want to help you do this and we have no resources if you yeah. put it under marketing it's a mm. massive boost like when you say that the last of us is blind accessible yeah. If you use that as a marketing boost, you have an entire niche of people who suddenly go, a game for me. Yeah. Does someone care about the genre? That's a game for me. I, yeah. I think you're probably right. I think there is something to be said for how quickly this got turned around, and specifically the mm -hmm. fact that if you're on marketing for this game, last week had a few back to back stories of this game might kill you if you're photosensitive. Yeah. That, and, and that's that not good for marketing. Too. Marketing wants to throw money at fixing that problem. Mm -hmm. But it definitely also the fact that they did that quickly enough and just went, right, so I'm just going to take this developer and sit him down here and we're fixing this and then we're calling it a victory. Not that we're going to erase a defeat, we're yeah. making a victory out of it because they have my attention. I would, I, I don't play fighting games, but this went from, a, uh, okay, and I'm definitely not playing this, to this is cool. Yeah. This is something I'm going to recommend now. Because yeah. they, they proactively try to fix things instead of going to the, we are very sorry yeah. for your complaint and we are very, very saddened to hear that you are having problems. So yeah, so there, there's no, you know. they, there was no solemn JPEG of we're, we're sorry, we didn't know, uh, yeah, you that, couldn't have expected us no, to know. It's just, no, we just we did something about it. There you go, done. Yeah, there's, there's no apology, there's no we're sad that you are unable to do No, no it's just, okay, we're going to make it better and we're just going to throw it out there. And Perfect. That's how accessibility should be. Basically, we made things more accessible. Talk about it. Come on. None of that. No, 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 no. This is a flaw. We cannot have yeah. flaws. We are perfect. And, and genuinely, that has been one of the most exciting things of the last few years is watching, like, look, it, it's cynical as it is, the realization that marketing teams had of it is a marketing positive to be able to say, like, we did good accessibility things. Yeah. You know, that's maybe not the motivation we want for accessibility, but if it gets the end result, then it doesn't matter how yeah. we got there. I mean, it it's basically also means that any interaction with a with a disabled community becomes a positive. Yeah, it becomes and thank that... you for fixing this, not we're angry yeah, exactly. at you for not. Yeah, I mean, you you if you make a game, I mean, Diablo 2 had a lot of hype just from the fact that they were, as far as I understood it, making Diablo 4 blind accessible and you had people going all over the place because we can play Diablo and instead of going with the and then if it doesn't work just go with you just going to sweep yeah. this under some sort of rug no no we're just gonna we're gonna make this blind accessible Hearthstone did that too when they had this they had that mod thing and then it didn't work and then you reach out and then you fix it and then you get publicity and you get positive uh, you know reviews yeah simple as that Exactly. Uh, I'm going to throw us back to us of the past to do the little outro, but uh, thank you for hopping back on to do this little update for yeah, us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that was great. A really, really uplifting thing. We're just going, oh, that was bad, and then we're going, oh, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think this is about where we're going to wrap up, I, I, I think, but is there anything else you would like to say uh, about uh, epilepsy and video games that, that, you know, for anyone watching this that doesn't hasn't thought about the topic before that you wish people sort of knew, I guess. Well, 
Well, the only other thing I can say is that it's very hard to find information about it. So what I've done is I've been writing down blog articles about everything I found that gave me a seizure. And if you want to look at that archive, I have it on, let me see if I can remember what it's called. Oh, uh, there we go. Electronicepileptic.wordpress.com. Wonderful. So electronic epileptic in uh, one word. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of blog article, uh, yeah, yeah, articles. Uh, they are primarily examples of things that are a problem. There are a few gold standards of games that either accidentally got it right or have been working with me to improve things. Uh, big shout out to Sea of Thieves. They just managed to hit it just perfect. Mostly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of blog articles there. There's a lot of different examples. There's a lot of things that you'll never think would be a problem because I never thought it was a problem and I've lived, had this for my entire life. Indeed. Um, and is there any anywhere else that people can find you on the internet or anything else you do you'd like to shout out before we finish up? No, no, I, th I mean, I'm on Discord. I'm on... Uh, well, various discords for the, um, people who have disabilities or who work in the disability related uh, game industries. Uh, there should be some contact info on the blog for me, but no, I think that's just about it. Lovely. Thank you very much for your time today. This has been wonderful. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, goodbye. Bye bye.